Hi guys, welcome back to another Hugh Jeffries video. In this video, I'm gonna be tearing down Samsung's new Galaxy S21 smartphone and assessing its repairability. To do this, I've purchased two, so I'm able to swap components around and see if there are any software locks to prohibit third-party repairs. We've seen issues that limit third-party repair in Apple's latest iPhone 12 and Samsung's Galaxy A51 models when parts are replaced. Is it the same with this S21? Well, let's find out. As part of a deal from Samsung, I also received a free pair of Galaxy Buds with each phone. These retail for $320 each. Cutting through the seals on the first phone, we can lift up the box and reveal the phone inside. Pulling the phone out, we can put it aside and see what was included with this Galaxy S21. First up, we have this box, which includes the quick start guide and warranty information. Also hidden in the box is a USB-C to USB-C cable. However, one essential item of the phone which isn't included is the power adapter. It's likely many of your old power adapters won't work with this cable given its USB-C connector. This terrible trend is resulting in your old adapters becoming obsolete. However, what I really don't understand is why they'd give me $320 headphones for free, but not give me a $70 power brick. I didn't get to choose an option between free headphones or a free charger. Honestly, I would have rather the phone just come with a charger and no headphones. Anyway, it's time to get our second S21 unboxed so we can start taking them apart. I will remove the protective film covering over both camera lenses. However, I will keep the pre-installed screen protector and protector on the back so these phones don't get any damage whilst I'm working on them. I will power them on and set up both phones so we can verify everything is working before we take them apart. Right off the bat, there are some differences between previous generations of Samsung phones. It no longer says the model number on the splash screen and the interface looks slightly different given Samsung's UI is now at version three. I will be adding my fingerprint into the phone so we can test out whether that remains after a display replacement. With both phones up and running, I'm going to go into settings and about phone so you can see the model numbers and software versions on these phones. Getting a look at the outside of these phones, they differ from previous Galaxy S models. The display is no longer curved. The SIM card tray is located next to the USB-C charger port. It lacks micro SD card expansion and that headphone jack, well, it's still missing. It's now time we opened up these new phones. I started by using my heat plate at 80 degrees to heat up the back of the phone. You wanna make sure not to overheat the back panel as it's made from plastic. I can then use my suction cup to create a gap for my plastic pick. Once inserted, I can run it around the edges to loosen the adhesive. The new camera design makes it a little harder. You wanna be careful of those three camera lenses as inserting your plastic pick too far could damage them. But with some precise prying, we can get the back free. You can see quite clearly here that it is very flexible given it's plastic material. It's time to get our next phone open, so I'll repeat the same process by heating it on the heat plate for a few minutes to soften the adhesive. I'm happy to see the return of the plastic back. There is a common belief that glass is premium. However, I disagree. This plastic back won't shatter when you drop the phone and from a repair perspective, it's safer to work on as you won't have glass flying around everywhere when you're trying to open the phone that could end up in your fingers or eyes. With the adhesive separated, we can remove the back panel from our second S21. With the back panels removed from both phones, we get our first look into Samsung's new Galaxy S21 smartphone. At a first glance, it looks similar to many other Samsung phones. However, there are a few things I noticed straight away. My model appears to be missing a few antennas. These antennas are likely for other regions of the world. This is a good thing as it likely means you can fit a frame from a different model. Also new is an appearance of tri-wing security screws. We'll have to get a closer look at what that's connecting to later on. Proceeding, I can remove 13 Phillips head screws from the upper speaker and antenna assembly, as well as the wireless charging module. To remove the wireless charging module, you'll also need to disconnect one cable underneath before lifting it out of the phone. I can then disconnect the battery and remove the upper speaker and antenna. I'll then start by disconnecting all of the flex cables so we can get this motherboard out of the phone. 
Using a spudger, I can lift it out of place and remove it from the phone. Getting a closer look at those security screws, they appear to be holding in an antenna. Performing a display replacement on the S21 would require a tri-wing screwdriver. It's now time to turn our attention to the other Samsung Galaxy S21, where I'll be removing its motherboard, where I can swap it into the other phone. In doing this, I will test whether any issues arise with replacement parts. I will repeat the same steps as the first phone by disconnecting all the flex cables, removing the earpiece, and finally, removing the motherboard. We can get it out of the phone and take a closer look at it. Motherboards have really decreased in size in the last few years, and this one is no exception. It is a dual layer board, which means there is essentially two motherboards soldered together. The LED flash, microphone, and proximity sensor are soldered directly onto the board, which could complicate repairs if they needed replacing. While swapping the motherboards between the two phones, I'm also going to be swapping the camera modules. In doing this, I've essentially changed every part in this phone, meaning I'm simulating all the common repairs. This might sound like a strange thing to do, however, when I did this test on two brand new iPhone 12s, I got various messages about the display and battery not being genuine, lost the true tone function and face ID, the battery said it needed servicing, and the cameras behaved strangely with certain functions not working. I also found issues with the Galaxy A51 fingerprint reader not working correctly after a display replacement. Hopefully, in doing this with this Samsung Galaxy S21, we don't see any of those issues. Reinstalling the motherboard, I can reconnect all of the flex cables, install the earpiece and antenna assembly, reconnect the battery and wireless charging module. Powering up the phone, we see the Samsung Galaxy branding, and to my surprise, the fingerprint sensor is still working. You can see based on the IMEI and the color of the phone that the motherboard has been replaced. Booting into the diagnostic menu, you can see all of the fingerprint sensor tests pass. Both the front facing camera and the rear cameras work correctly, as well as the SIM card. So we've established this phone has no software locks on any of the hardware inside, which is awesome. We can now swap the cameras back into their correct motherboard. I still want to dig a little deeper inside this phone and get a good look at that new SIM card mechanism. However, before we do that, I need to ensure that the cameras are installed correctly. One small thing that I encountered is that this metal tab on the camera assembly needs to be on the top side of the motherboard, otherwise it won't sit flat in the phone. Proceeding down to the lower portion of the phone, I'll remove six screws holding in place the speaker assembly. Removing this will give us access to our charging port and SIM card tray. I'll need to remove three flex cables from the phone. You can see this time around, Samsung has used a separate detachable cable for the display. This is awesome, as if you damage that cable, it can be easily replaced without the need to replace the entire display. Removing three screws, I can remove the charging port assembly. This configuration reminds me of some of Google's Pixel phones. It's unfortunate not to see an SD card expansion slot, However, one thing I have noticed is that this single physical SIM phone has a dual SIM card reader. This has me thinking, I wonder if you could flash the software and convert this phone into a dual physical SIM model. The last thing I'm going to do is remove this battery. It's a very common repair on smartphones given the battery wears out over time. It's unfortunate to see Samsung has used a massive amount of adhesive like we've seen in the past. Even heating this phone up to 120 degrees, the battery removal was still very difficult, and I had to use a metal tool as I broke one of my plastic picks. We have now pulled the phone fully apart and can get a good look at everything that came out of it. While you can also remove the display from the frame, it's likely that it would get damaged in the process, and it's not very common to replace a display without the frame already attached to it. But with our two phones in bits, it's time that we put them back together, and hopefully, they still work. Starting with the battery, its original adhesive was strong enough to hold it in place a second time. I'll reinstall the charging port and its three screws, as well as attach the three cables. Reinstalling the speaker, I can fasten its six Phillips head screws. Turning my attention up to the top of the phone, I can reinstall the motherboard back into place, and connect all of its appropriate flex cables.
Next to go in is the earpiece up top and I'll reinstall all of its Phillips head screws. Reconnecting the battery, I can give the inside a little bit of a clean before we get the wireless charging module reinstalled. After connecting its cable, all that's left to do is secure its five screws. I'll need to repeat the same process for our other S21 and get it all back into one piece. While there was quite a lot of screws that came out of these two phones, they are all the same size with the exception to those tri-wing screws up the top, which does make reassembly easier if you get the screws muddled up. Reconnecting the wireless charging coil and fastening its screws, the last thing we'll need to do is reapply the two back covers. As this phone has just come out, there are no replacement adhesive strips for sale online, so I'm just going to reuse the adhesive that was already installed from the factory. To my surprise, this holds down the back panels just fine and they aren't lifting anywhere. After lining both panels up and pressing them down into place, we're done. So this is it, Samsung's new Galaxy S21, a phone that's more durable than the previous model thanks to its plastic back. Every major component is modular and not paired to the device, making it repairable. The battery is still using too much glue, however with some persistence it can be removed. If you watched my A51 teardown and repair assessment video, you'll know the fingerprint stopped working on that phone after a display replacement. I believe this software lock was introduced as the reader became inaccurate, however they still didn't provide a way for the end user to recalibrate it. As Samsung's S21 fingerprint is fused into the screen and isn't a modular component, we don't see this calibration issue. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, hit that subscribe button and consider checking out the teardown and repair assessment playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any tips or what tools I use to repair devices, be sure to check out my website, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.